Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Heligoland, fought between Germany and England, located near the German naval base on the northwest German coast on August 28, 1914. This was the first naval battle in World War I. The British had always had some sort of plan to enable blockades of German ports if they were ever to go to war. In an attempt to put pressure on the German naval forces that had been patrolling the northwest corner of the German coast, that is exactly what they did. Earlier, the British Expeditionary Force had been transported across the sea between August 12th and the 21st, protected by the British Grand Fleet. This fleet remained in the center of the North Sea area, ready to move against any German attack, but none came. A section of British forces were commanded by Commander Reginald Tyrwitt, who led the Fearless and Arethusa, two light cruisers, along with an additional 31 destroyers, in the 1st and 3rd flotillas. The British submarines were commanded by Commodore Roger Keyes, who was responsible for most of the planning of this battle. The plan was to send the submarines out on August 26, as they were slower, where they would meet up with the surface ships who would leave on the 27th. There, they would investigate the North Sea and engage any German ships they found. Admiral John Jellicoe, commanding the entire Grand Fleet, was not told of this plan until August 26, at which case he requested to send more of his ships as part of the attack, but he was told he could only send a few battle cruisers purely as support. This additional support was part of the first battle cruiser squadron, having recently arrived from Scapa Flow. The battleships New Zealand and Invincible were part of this force. At around 0700, the Arethusa, a modern L-class destroyer, moved towards where they believed the German ships waited. This is when they spotted a German torpedo boat. Along with the Arethusa, there were 16 more destroyers of the 3rd Flotilla present, the German torpedo boat, the G-194, radioed back and informed German Rear Admiral Franz von Hipper, command of the German battlecruiser squadron responsible for defense of the area. Hipper was unaware of the size of the British forces and ordered the light cruisers the SMS Stettin and the Fraunlob to attack the destroyers. The light cruisers SMS Mainz, Strasbourg, Köln, Arodne, Stralsund, and the Kohlberg were also ordered to start preparations for the battle as well. The initial contact was between four destroyers and the G-194. However, the firing of the destroyer's guns alerted the remaining German destroyers who approached the area. Tierwitt noted the new German destroyers arriving, in which turn he chased them back through the deepening mist until those ships reached Heligoland. There, he was forced to retreat back. The Fraunlob engaged the Arethusa in a duel. The Arethusa was better armed and should have done better immediately, except two of its 400mm guns jammed and a third was damaged by the Fraunlob shelling. The Fraunlob took advantage of the situation and moved forward with its 10 4.1 inch guns and was causing considerable damage when one of the Arthusa's 250 mm guns got a lucky shot and destroyed the Fraunlob's bridge. This killed 37 men, including the captain, forcing the Fraunlob to withdraw badly damaged. The battle continued to rage on between multiple ships with varying degrees of success that the Germans seemed to be pulling ahead when Terwick called in for the two battleships, the New Zealand and the Invincible. These two British battleships made fairly quick work of the German cruisers, the Mainz, the Kiln, the Arodne, and damaging three more light cruisers. The Germans, not wishing to lose any more ships, withdrew. The total casualties for the fight were for the British, 35 men killed, 55 wounded, one light cruiser heavily damaged, three destroyers damaged. The Germans had suffered much heavier casualties. 712 men were killed, 149 wounded, 336 captured, Three light cruisers were sunk, two torpedo boats sunk, one destroyer sunk, three destroyers heavily damaged, one light cruiser heavily damaged, and two light cruisers moderately damaged. Well, there goes the first naval battle of World War I. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.